It's all been leading up to this. Working backwards through each death battle season to find the best, the worst, and the middle-est of each bunch. Even though most of my opinions and those have all aged like milk, but more on that at the end of the video. For now, let's turn our attention to the show's very first season. And before I get into the ranking, I want to make it clear that I hold season 1 to much, much lower standards than everything that followed it. This was just the show's baby steps, so I'm not expecting them to have everything figured out yet. Just want to make that clear before I get comments along the lines of What? You like Shadow vs Vegeta but not She-Ra vs Wonder Woman? Just keep in mind that whenever I say something about these older episodes is good, I mean for its time. Very rarely will an aspect of the older episodes still hold up to this day. If I was holding them to the standards I have for Death Battle nowadays, then I could probably count on one hand the amount of episodes that would get above a 3 out of 10. Though this mostly applies to the episodes that Ben animated. From Zelda vs Peach onwards, I do hold them to a bit of a higher standard. Alright, now that that's established, let's see what my least favourite episode of Season 1 is and work our way up to the better ones. I said the word baby over 17 times! Turn it off! So, this was not what I initially expected to put at last place. Because just looking at the episode quality, I don't think it's the absolute worst. But the more I thought about it, and after discussing it a bit with Nemesis, I realised how much this episode just disgusts me and what it represents. To the point where I can't rightfully not put it in any place other than dead last. Justin Bieber vs Rebecca Black is fucking awful. Let's separate this from the matchup itself and just look at how well made the episode is on its own. Starting with the analysis, it fucking sucks. There is not a single joke in here I think is well written. Almost all of them are, Wiz says thing, Boomstick gets upset about tween pop stars. The sidebar in Rebecca Black's analysis also includes the word derp, and I fucking hate it. Any bits of comedic value I get are purely down to either the timing or just how certain lines are delivered. Then there's the animation, which is your typical season 1 fight scene. Except these two have so little to work with that there's nothing to help it stand out. Except for an aggressively mid-explosion death with some okay comedic timing. These are just regular people, so they have no special moves or powers or anything to make it even remotely interesting. Shot even more in the foot by how they had maybe six edited Scott Pilgrim sprites between both of them for Ben to use. So okay, the episode's pretty bad, but not the absolute worst. Not taking the match itself into account, I would have probably put it above the next two. But then you consider what this episode is, and everything falls apart. This episode exists solely so people can watch Justin Bieber and Rebecca Black die. That's it. It's not a parody, it's not even really an episode of Death Battle technically, because there's no analysis into who would actually win. This episode literally exists solely to kill off two kids, just because they made some music videos people didn't like, and I think that's pretty fucked up. I'm not even a diehard fan of either of these two, I don't like either of their music, but that's not relevant. These two were already facing monolithic amounts of backlash for their music, and all this episode served as was fuel to the fire. This is the one episode of Death Battle that is outright morally fucked up. This goes beyond just spiting a fictional character, this is straight up cyberbullying real people. And given its view count, could likely have sent thousands of other people to give these two even more shit. Even if this isn't outright the worst episode in terms of quality, it's just horrible on a conceptual level. It is the only one that could outright have caused genuine harm to the real people they made fight. Not having this in dead last after thinking more about the episode just wouldn't feel right. It is leagues worse than Rogue vs Wonder Woman, Starscream vs Rainbow Dash, any other episode really. And yes, this means it has dethroned Shadow vs Mewtwo as my least favourite episode. I hated that one because it spited a fictional character, this one spiting real people just makes it even worse. And yes, this is currently the only episode I would now give that 1 out of 10 score to. The best thing I can say about this episode is that it showed them exactly how not to go about using real people in verses. Cause Chuck vs Sega is the opposite extreme where they hype the real person up and focus on their fictional counterpart. And that episode's amazing. Hopefully when they do Randy Savage vs Kool-Aid Man, they manage to incorporate more elements from Chuck vs Segata and less from this hot mess. Well, then when she's unconscious, I can Wonder Woman has had three pretty rocky episodes on this show, and her first one is unquestionably the worst of them. 
Rogue vs. Wonder Woman is legitimately atrocious. The animation's whatever, there's some decent conveniences of speed, the death's okay, the rest of it's just standard season 1 fare with aesthetic animation, awful clashing of sprites, and the lack of real standout moments. Though that doesn't bother me as much since this is episode 3, and they actually got rid of the health bars which I appreciate, I didn't really like those in the first two episodes. But for once, the analysis is what sinks this episode for me. An analysis has to be a special kind of bad to be the driving force for me disliking an episode as much as I do, and this is one of the few examples of that that comes to mind. This episode has Boomstick at his absolute worst. He's had horny jokes in other episodes and those are whatever. That is the only kind of joke this episode has. It's all about how he wants to grope every female character on screen. I'm pretty sure he has more lines that include jokes like that than ones that don't in this episode. Beyond just being cringe as fuck, painfully unfunny, and generally repetitive, it comes across as genuinely creepy. I don't care how early in the show this was, you have to draw the line at a point earlier than turning one of your hosts into a sex pest. There's not much to say about the episode other than that, because that's all the episode is comprised of. Almost every second is either boring or irritating, and it makes for an episode I don't want to go back to unless I have to for a video. Even for the standards of season 1, this episode fucking sucks. <laughs> Man, Starscream vs Rainbow Dash just does not sit right with me. This is one of those kinds of episodes that tries to make one character seem really cool, and then make the other look like a complete dumbass. On paper, that's not the worst idea for this match in particular, so long as it was done in an entertaining way. And it really wasn't. It had the occasional semi-funny moment, both in the analysis and the animation, but for the most part, they were boring, and the animation got flat out annoying at some points. There's no blood, gore, cursing, or anything generally adult in this episode, and I can get why. Ben admits the reason in his Road to 100 blog, he didn't want to traumatise any young girls who liked My Little Pony and stumbled across the video. The target audience for that show is generally younger than even stuff like Mario and Sonic that they'd used before, so I get it. But if they had to restrict themselves so much, why even bother doing the episode? That's not even the worst of it. Ben even straight up says that if they had come to the conclusion that Starscream should have won, the episode would have been cancelled. That really rubs me the wrong way, and I can only imagine how frustrating all of this would have been for an actual Transformers fan. But that aside, is there really much for me to get out of this episode? Uh, the analysis has the occasional line delivery I like, the animation's decently fast for season 1, and I like Starscream using his silver tongue to buy himself time. And that's about it. It's an episode with borderline no memorable jokes in the analysis, I didn't really need to hear about Starscream possessing a little girl with her pants down, no thanks. And the animation's a one-sided beatdown where Starscream lands two hits, gets bodied, and receives a shithouse death that they admit wouldn't even kill him. I'm glad both of these series got better episodes later on down the line, to very different extents, but their first outing sucked. Hopefully Galactus vs Unicron and maybe Bill Cipher vs Discord can happen sometime soon and help make the good episodes for these series outweigh the bad. Driving while drunk is one of the dumbest things you can do. If you've seen my Heihachi vs Geese review, then you already know about the extent of my opinions on this episode. Chunli vs Mai is real bad. The analysis is just a less awful Rogue vs Wonder Woman. Boomstick doesn't blatantly say he'd sexually assault someone at least, but the horny jokes get old fast. Season 1 usually has a sense of charm in the analysis segments at least, but this one's devoid of even that. The fight scene isn't, but it's also boring with few moments that stand out for me, and the ones that do range from, yeah this is alright I guess, to the awful and abrupt death. I mean, I guess the wall jump battle's a decent enough scene as a whole, but that's really about it. This episode manages to make me strongly dislike it while also being really forgettable and boring. That's actually pretty impressive, points to it for that I guess. It has its moments, but nothing that stands out as something particularly amazing. Except the drunk driving PSA though, that shit slaps. Fight. Luke vs Harry is so boring, holy shit. This is one of the worst examples of the end analysis just being them narrating what happened in the fight. And Harry is so out of character that it hurts, even for me as someone who's never watched or read Harry Potter. From my understanding, the killing curse is something he's forbidden from using to the point where he's never used it in canon. It is the first thing he tries to do as soon as the fight starts and he spams it for the rest of the fight. The fight's well animated for season 1 standards, but it still just isn't interesting to me at all. No moment stuck with me except for how goofy the death looked, not a fan. Also the analysis has several horny boomstick jokes, no thanks. 
there's not a whole lot I super strongly dislike. I mean, I have no attachment to Harry Potter at all, but there's not much that worked for me either. Harry's analysis had a few jokes I chuckled at. Whenever they're not being cursed by somehow putting more bad horny boomstick lines in this episode of all things, I think the comedy generally lands here. Wiz gets bullied for being an incel and boomstick killed a magician. Good stuff. And while the death looks mostly dumb, props to the scene where Luke uses Shatterpoint to tear open Harry's scar. That's really creative and cool and it's the main thing that stuck with me from the episode. I quite liked it. I didn't like the episode overall though. It had its moments, but otherwise, yeah. It's time for a cat fight! Felicia vs. Tao Kaka is perfectly average season 1 filler that I have no strong opinion on. I don't like it, I don't dislike it, and I always forget about it when thinking of the season list. There are a few jokes I like in the analysis regarding them being cats, and I like the delivery of Yes, Boomstick, we get it, she's like Sonic. Anyway. But that's really about it. Though credit where it's due, I fully expected more degenerate Boomstick in the analysis than what we got. They kept the amount of unfunny jokes relating that down to just one, so congrats on subverting my expectations. The fight is fine, no standout moments to me at all really. My favourite part's the death, but that got into like C tier on my video ranking every death in the show, so that should be a good indicator of how I feel about the whole episode really. The only other part in the animation that I can really remember is them stopping to chase the butterfly. It's a neat callback to how they say they both get easily distracted in their analysis segments, that was neat. Hot take, but I think this is definitely the weaker of the two Dark Stalkers episodes, not gonna lie Wiz. And I say Zangief, you are a bad guy. But this does not mean you're bad guy. Hagar vs Zangief is very middle of the road for this season. The analysis is whatever, the fight's alright with some good meaty hits at points and a pretty tense finisher, and the conclusion somehow treats youth and lack of a political agenda as reasons to give Zangief the edge, which, uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Honestly, I don't even know what I can say about this one. Very little stands out as good or bad. This is the only episode to feature a cameo from Pedo Bear, so that's, um... That sure is something, I guess. I went in wanting to write each segment to be around a minute long, but I'm barely at the 30 second mark here and I'm already out of things to say. Next episode, I guess. And for some reason, in all his infinite wisdom, the great Master Splinter gave the most complicated weapon to- The Ninja Turtles Battle Royale is a weird mixed bag for me. The fight scene is solid enough with a really amazing ending and one other death that I like, and the conclusion's pretty extensive by season 1 standards. Also, I get a lot of ironic comedic value from the end clips of each analysis. Honestly, I was tempted to place this fight higher and give it a 7 out of 10, but damn it, I hate how they treat Mikey in this episode. This is the worst case of them disrespecting one of the characters they've ever done. Character is the key word there, Justin Bieber and Rebecca Black don't count. Shadow vs Mute is a way worse episode, but like, at least Wiz doesn't straight up call Shadow a slur. At least Shadow lasts longer than 20 seconds in the fight. At least Shadow's analysis doesn't end with, man, he better not win this fight. Those are the only props that that episode's getting for me, fuck off. It's a shame because the rest of the episode, for its time, is fairly good. The action's enjoyable and two of the three deaths are solid. If Mikey wasn't just blatantly shit on for the whole episode, this would have likely gotten a lot higher. Because this is still season 1, it isn't enough to make me outright dislike the episode, but it was enough to drop it in the rankings considerably. The Ninjakin is, in fact, an invention of Hollywood, as there is no historical evidence of the weapon's existence. Like the moon landing! That's right, Boomstick. Zitz vs Leonardo was a really neat concept. Having the winner of a battle royale come back the very next episode to fight a new opponent? That's pretty neat. I like it. I say that because the concept is about all that's interesting about this episode. It's fine, I enjoyed myself, but very little stands out. I like the moon landing joke I guess, that caught me off guard. There's some good character animation that shows Zit's focus on raw power compared to Leo's strategic mind. The death is solid enough, and that's really about it. It doesn't have high points like the episode that preceded it, but at least this one doesn't actively mock one of the characters, so it has that going for it. I know this is probably the shortest segment of the video, but this is also the shortest episode they've ever done, so actually it was intentional all along. Have a naggy wife? Blow her ass up too! I used to hate Bomberman vs Dig Dug, and I have no clue why. Like, if you asked me two years ago, I would have probably called this my least favourite of the season and one of my top five least favourite episodes ever. But upon rewatch, it was actually decently fun. The fight has its dumb moments, sure, Bomberman finds all his power-ups all at once, very well paced I must say. And Dig Dug survives an onslaught from Rui, being caught in this massive explosion and a massive fall. 
despite them making a point of how easily he could be taken out in the analysis. But the rest of it's just fun. The fight doesn't have a lot of standout moments, I mean, I like the death and the back and forth kicking of that one bomb, but outside of that, uh, The analysis was fairly enjoyable. I liked a good amount of the jokes, both ironically and unironically. For every time they make fun of Reboot Bomberman or mention Bomberman blowing up his taxes, there's a fucking demotivational poster and Wiz describing this as unimaginable speed. I don't love this episode or even strongly like it, but it's fun. Might rewatch it from time to time. No idea why I used to hate it as much as I did, but I'm glad I can enjoy it now. No, my car! Yoshi vs. Riptor was an episode I didn't really expect to like, but I surprisingly found enough good elements to place it way higher on here than I expected. While the fight's super short, and this is a case of one character getting bodied and then pulling a win out of their ass, literally in this case, the animation still conveys Riptor's speed and ferocity quite well. The analysis also has some funny jokes. I like the bit about the baby launcher, I like Boomstick's reaction to the finisher, and I like the whole Velociraptor tangent in Riptor's analysis. It's not super funny, but it's neat to see Boomstick take the lead in terms of covering a topic in the analysis for something he's passionate about. Yeah, it's an episode with a script short enough to post in a Discord message, the ending of the fight's really abrupt and out of left field, and the whole episode reeks of, lol the kitty character beat the gritty violent one, bet you didn't expect that, and I hate when they try to be quirky like that, but as a whole, watching this one was actually a pleasant surprise, I had a good time. This was also another episode to include the funny that's right boomstick line, so it gets points for that as well. That's right boomstick. The one that started it all. The fact that this isn't my least favourite season premiere by a long shot is baffling and also kinda sad. Boba Fett vs Samus Aran is a fun way to kill 7 minutes, and that's about it. Aside from the scene of Fett getting chased through the sky, there isn't a whole lot that stands out here as something I particularly love or something I particularly hate. The entire episode is decently charming and ironically funny, but there's not much more to it than that. I covered basically everything I wanted to say about this episode in my video on the season premieres. It's a decently fun time that isn't that bad for season 1 standards. I'll even occasionally rewatch it as a way to remind myself just how far this show's come since its humble beginnings. You know, I've always wanted to eat a Pokemon. What? They look delicious! Pikachu vs Blanco is pretty fun. Not amazing or anything, the analysis doesn't have many jokes that stuck with me, and the animation's just kind of white noise for the most part, but generally, I enjoyed myself. Blanca's analysis had a few jokes that I thought were decently funny, and Pikachu's one just made me nostalgic for the Gen 4 anime. Also, Buizel's there, top tier episode by default. The episode doesn't do anything aggressively awfully. Yeah, making Blanca into an electric type is dumb, but I don't really care. But on the flip side, it doesn't do much outstandingly well that I can really comment on, so I'm left with very little to talk about. The line about training with Dan being anti-training made me chuckle, and the death is pretty great. It has some tense build-up and the killing blow itself is really funny. It's one of the few to pull off being super abrupt well, since it's done intentionally for comedic effect, and Blanca turning Pikachu into a smoothie with the blender as he charges it with his own body is just really funny. And that's your lot really. I enjoyed it, and that's about it. I don't love it, but it was fun enough for it to place way higher than I expected it to. Now let's look at an episode that did the opposite of that. If there was any episode that placed much, much lower than I expected, it was Link vs Cloud. I expected this to place in the top 3, or at least the top 5, but it barely cracked the top half. Not to say I didn't like it, because I did, but it's way too rough around the edges and shows its age far too much. Like, I know this was the first 3D episode, but comparing it to Goku vs Superman in terms of jank is like night and day. Though I guess that isn't really fair to Link vs Cloud because it doesn't have the insane speed and flight to mask the janky movements that Goku vs Superman had. To its credit, I like a good bit about it. The sword fighting's mostly solid, I like how the environment's used, and the analysis is mostly entertaining. The fight has some real standout moments too. I like Cloud being frozen and Link stunning Cloud for long enough to get his sword, but wait, didn't they specifically say Cloud resisted statuses like stunned in the analysis? They even have him resist being frozen, so he does have that armor piece on him, so what gives? Whatever, it was a cool moment at least. What wasn't a cool moment was the death though. Link powering the Omni Slash is cool, but much like the rest of the animation, it's janky as fuck. Mostly thanks to the camera movements. And then he cuts Cloud, blows him up and stabs him, leaving no mark on his head where Boomstick implies he stabbed him through. Also, Cloud falls down like this and I just can't take it seriously, it's so fucking funny. This is a solid test for 3D animation, but it feels like just that. 
a test, a way to experiment for future episodes. It's a good episode that I like and it has its moments, but it's not free from its fair share of hot garbage. Now that the remaster's out, I don't really have much of a reason to ever go back to this one. Oh, hey, look, you can bring her back. That's right, Boomstick. Akuma vs. Shang Tsung, considering that it's the second episode of the show, is surprisingly solid. The analysis is nothing special, but the finger painting joke was alright. The fight is better than it has any right to be. Nothing amazing, but it has a decent conveyance of the character's speed and shows their fighting styles quite well. Akuma is able to do massive amounts of damage when he goes on the offensive, but his advantage is lost completely the moment Sung is able to land a single hit on him. Sung's greater intelligence and cunnings used to outmaneuver Akuma at points, land some sucker punches, and even save himself from being killed immediately. I also really like how Sung morphs into Akuma. It leads to a decently tense ending with some really hype music to make it even more exciting. It's got good build up to the death as well since it's not initially clear who won. I will say this does suffer a bit more from happening earlier on than most other episodes though, as it means Shang Tsung's shapeshifting isn't really able to be taken full advantage of since he only gets to turn into two other people, but the episode's still pretty good all things considered. <laughs> Kratos vs Spawn, more than most other episodes, suffered from happening too early on. I think this especially could have been done way better if it was a 6 minute long 3D fight in season 2. I know that applies to most of the season, but given the versatility that these guys have, I think they suffered more than most of the rest of the season 1 cast. Does this mean I want to see the fight be remastered? Well, this isn't Master Chief vs Doom guy, so no. But I would like to see both of them return. Dante vs Kratos and Ghost Rider vs Spawn both sound like really fun episodes. They're probably the only battles between two returners that I actually want. But I'm not here to talk about those. Kratos vs Spawn may have happened too early to have its potential fully utilised, but I still really liked the episode that we got. The analysis isn't anything special, but it covers the weapons and abilities it needs to well enough. The fight's actually pretty well done, the speed of both characters is conveyed well, and the sound design and screen checks make the big hits feel decently meaty and impactful. It uses a good amount of their abilities considering the short runtime of the fight, and I like seeing how their arsenals bounce off each other. A small touch I like is that Spawn's chains are able to counter the Blades of Exile at the start, but then when he uses them in the exact same way against the Blade of Olympus, Kratos is able to get past them, showing the difference in power between the two weapons. I do have a few issues with the ending though. I'm not sure what's meant to be happening here. Is this meant to be Kratos letting the fire arrow charge for too long until it makes him catch fire himself? Or is it Spawn manipulating the fire to spread to Kratos' body? That would explain why he suddenly stops doing whatever this is to throw an underhand energy attack. Might just be me being dumb and not knowing how their powers work, or maybe it just isn't conveyed well. Or maybe it's both. It's probably both. Also, the death's fucking lame. Buildup is cool, like I said, the Blades of Olympus cutting the chains and the fake out is solid. But then Spawn just teleports behind him and takes him out with one quick strike to the head. Wait a minute. Wow, I had way more to say on this fight than I expected. It's pretty good. One of the highlights of the first part of the season. Goombas are fucking morons. That's right. Goomba vs Koopa is better than it realistically should be. They had so little to work with for this match, but they're able to make full use out of everything these two have to make for a fun fight. There's some really good usage of the environmental hazards to make things more interesting. The entire segment of the Bullet Bill onslaught is surprisingly tense. And the ending's a great anticlimax that I find really funny. This is also one of few season 1 episodes that is fully justified being as short as it is. The analysis has next to nothing to go over, but they're still able to make it decently funny and the short length doesn't give it much of an opportunity to drag. The episode isn't clear of flaws though, even putting aside the universal issues this season faces, there are several parts of the fight where both of them should have realistically died with the logic death battle themselves went off. A few jokes fall flat and I also just hate the face that the Goomba makes here, but there's nothing too major. There's not much for me to talk about here, it's just a solid gag episode that I really like. This fight was nuts! After most of the worst episodes of the season preceding it, Master Chief vs Doomguy was such a pleasant rewatch. Chief's analysis is nothing special and the explanation for his victory is pretty bad, but Doomguy's analysis has some jokes that I liked and the animation is really fun. It's the first straight up gunfight of the show and I think it was pulled off quite well. I like the differences in how they fight. Chief fights more tactically, taking cover and waiting out the timer on Doomguy's power ups, and he has more weapons scattered around the arena as Doomguy just goes in guns blazing right off the bat. There's also some cool standout moments, like Chief catching the rocket and throwing the warthog. 
It's a really fun fight and it uses a good amount of their weapons too. Obviously not all of them though, I wish they could have used the Spartan Laser and the Unmaker after showing how they are the most powerful weapons they both have in the analysis, but other than that they use enough to keep the fight entertaining. The ending's a bit of a mixed bag, Chief somehow puts down a bubble shield after the explosion had already gone off, and then throws a plasma grenade through it even though he can't do that, but then Doomguy explodes and Chief teabags him and it's funny, I like it. Definitely one of the better Ben animated episodes. Now, hopefully, they remaster it at some point. Just not before they do Chief vs. Samus, of course. Mario vs. Sonic was, as far as I can remember, the first death battle I ever watched. So, of course, I'm gonna have a bit of a soft spot considering that watching it ultimately had a bigger impact on my life than most other episodes. That doesn't mean I'm gonna hype it up as amazing, though, because it isn't. Sonic's analysis is alright, but Mario's is full of a bunch of jokes that made me groan. Except the one about the frog suit, that was alright, and the fight had a few pacing issues. It felt like there was a bit too much stopping and starting at points, the montage at the start is probably the biggest example of that. Outside of that though, I really enjoyed the fight scene. Sonic's edge and speed is conveyed well since he moves a lot faster than Mario does, I enjoyed seeing their power-ups clash and cancel each other out, and there are some funny moments in the fight, like Sonic tapping his foot in front of the statue, and both of them getting blown up by a mountain of bombs. And even if the death is a bit awkwardly animated, the chase at the end is pretty intense. Sonic also had a voice actor, and I think Cade and Red Pearl did a good job. They're not given a whole lot of lines, but the few they do have are delivered decently well. Yet, despite this being my first episode, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it than the rest of the season. I don't love it overall, but I can at least appreciate the path that led me down to where I am today. <laughs> Thor vs Raiden is really good, though not as good as I remember. There weren't any jokes that really stuck with me from the analysis, the end clips are pretty bad, and the animation has a few weird moments. Even though they say they're both immune to electricity, Thor is at one point tired out after just taking several electric attacks. Also, there's this bit where Raiden spends way too long just flying off and doing nothing, no clue what that's all about. The rest of it's good though, they included a lot of Thor's weather manipulation which was nice, and they even had him attack with an oak tree, that's a cool callback to the start of his analysis. The battle has a nice sense of speed and pacing outside of that one weird scene I mentioned earlier. It makes up for the styles of these sprites clashing, but that never really bothered me at any point. They also don't look weird on the 3D backgrounds, and I like how they interact with them. There are several points where Raiden and Mjolnir bounce off some mountains, and the big open space is used at some points for Raiden to put some distance between them and for Thor to do his weather shenanigans. The death is also amazing. Thor throwing Raiden's already wounded body into the sun is ghoulish overkill, and I just love it. I guess that also counts as using the environment. Thor's voice lines are used really well. Thor vs Wonder Woman tried to replicate some of them, but I think the episode was better off with the original Marvel vs Capcom clips. In a similar way to how Vader vs Doom was better off with its MVC lines, than Lex vs Doom was trying to get Steve and Kelly to redo them. For a battle that was one of my favourites of the season for years, I'm surprised I didn't have more to say on this one, but there we go I guess. Wow. What a ripoff. <laughs> Vegeta vs Shadow is without a doubt the funniest episode of the Shadow Trilogy. The banter and voice acting in this is probably the best of the entire season. Lani and Taka sell everything really well for both of these characters, and their exchanges are all really funny. The first half of the fight has some shockingly well-paced action and greatly shows how well Vegeta can take a hit. And the second half, while really light on action, has a really intense ending with Vegeta punching down the moon and Shadow using every ounce of his power to teleport it back into place. It helps to convey the power they both have really well, and I'm shocked that Ben was able to use the sound and music to make what's essentially just moving a PNG feel really impactful. This isn't Goku and Superman blowing up the planet levels of impact or anything, but it's still more than good enough. The ending is also really funny and started the one consistently good trend across all three of Shadow's episodes. The vaporization death is lame in concept, but in execution it manages to be really memorable by, like the rest of the episode, placing a greater emphasis on comedy to help it stand out. I'm really glad this episode was done so early on because it makes the Dragon Ball vs Sonic debate much less of a headache. I am convinced that if this was done now with a greater focus on stats, I wouldn't like it nearly as much. But as it is, I really like it. Now, please never match these series against each other again. Please, God, I beg of you. They kicked her in the face really hard and it went boom. I am so surprised at how much I liked Zelda vs Peach upon a rewatch, because so many people made it out to be one of the worst episodes of all time. 
Is it because of the soccer ball calc? I mean, yeah, that's dumb, but that's the only reason I've ever heard for why people hate this one as much as they do. Not to say the episode doesn't have its fair share of garbage, because Zelda's analysis is pretty boring, I don't like how the episode opens by calling them both worthless. There's more focus on Smash Bros than I would have liked, and there are certainly a few lines that have aged. Or baking cakes in the kitchen like any good woman should. Um, less than well. But I had a lot of fun with the rest of the episode. Peach's analysis surprisingly had quite a few jokes that I liked. They have Boomstick make sex related jokes and this time they're not fucking awful. Probably because this time it's not related to him directly saying he wants to bone the character they're talking about regardless of consent. They also call back to the Mario Party line from Yoshi vs Riptor which I appreciate. And I like how the conclusion ends after the dumb calc with Boomstick trying to dump everything down so he can understand it. But the best line is Boomstick's reaction to finding out they have to do an ad in the episode. Oh, wait, 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 we gotta do an ad. What? He sounds so distraught. The fight's also just really well done. Even though the Zelda sprites are an eyesore, the action in this is just fun. It's the first time they blended sprites with a 3D background, and I think it still holds up. I like the setup with the ram to have it come back in the end, the destruction of the bridge felt pretty impactful, I like the freefall scene, and the ending's pretty great. They're throwing projectiles back and forth, and Peach's turnips all have different faces, that's a nice attention to detail. And then the ram falls back down, hits Zelda, and we get one of the best killing blows of the season. The sound design makes the hit feel really meaty, the slow motion gives it time to sink in, and the voice clip they use for Zelda's death scream is great. This ending is amazing, and I can't gush over it enough. Well, I mean, I've pretty much said my piece already, but you get what I mean. All of this is so far beyond most of the episodes that Band had previously animated, and that's because he didn't do this one. This was Mr. Lang's... yeah, we'll go with that. Mr. Lang's first outing as an animator for the show, and props to him, he did really well. And I'm glad he stuck around for more, because he's behind some real gems in early season two. I've come to make an announcement! I am fucking sick of hearing about Boomstick's fucking father and his daddy issues. All the Mario and Sonic fights ranked very highly on this list, huh? Eggman vs. Wily was Ben's final episode as an animator, and man, what a great note to go out on. It goes without saying that this far surpasses all of his other animations. While it can be a bit slow at points, with a few bits of bad dialogue, this really stands out among the rest of the season for being the only army battle the show ever did. The huge variety in troops with the focus constantly changing leads to it never getting boring, and there are some solid jokes. It's also got a good sense of pacing to it. Wily takes the lead with their fodder, then Eggman takes over with the stronger badniks, then Wily evens the playing field as they both whittle down each other's forces. My only big complaint with this one is that Eggman and Wily's deaths kinda suck. Metal's transformation into Metal Overlord is cool, even if him just standing and letting himself get hit with the Roboenza was dumb and meant the Egg Fleet never really got to do anything, but then he just lasers both Eggman and Wily and then it's over. The result isn't very well explained either. They don't go into how Metal outguns Wily's entire army, or how he would even get infected with the Roboenza in the first place. So yeah, it ends on a pretty weak note, but the rest of the episode was pretty great. The animation was really fun and the analysis was solid. It covered all the robots quite well and threw in some good jokes. An overall really good episode that easily holds up as one of the best fights of the entire season. I bet he wishes he could fight old bats in a battle to the death- OH WAIT! Batman vs Spider-Man is a pretty great episode. I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. And it's what's getting the silver medal out of this entire season. Oh no. Starting with the analysis, it's fine. Spider-Man's had a few jokes I liked, a few I didn't, and the rest of the episode is pretty standard. But the animation almost always holds more weight in where I rank these episodes, and thankfully this episode has a really good one. Everything's so fast and fluid, the hits feel impactful thanks to good sound design, I like seeing how Spidey deals with all these different gadgets, it's a lot of fun. The death also still holds up to this day as one of the best of the show. Not only is it much more gruesome than most of the previous finishers the show had, but the immensely satisfying sound effects sell the impact of everything so well. Not just Batman getting splattered, but Spidey pulling back the big web has this really nice stretching sound coupled with the camera movement and really fluid animation. It's fucking stellar. The fight only has a few issues that hold it back from a higher score. For one, there are a few moments where Spider-Man just stands there and lets Batman hit him, even though the Spidey sense should help him avoid that. But that's fairly minor and doesn't happen too often. Not my big issue with the fight is how one-sided it is. Throughout the whole fight, Spider-Man lands one combo and a few stray hits. He spends the rest of the fight getting his ass kicked and it makes it a bit less fun to watch. And it does hold the death back a bit since there's not a whole lot of build-up. He decides he's done getting stomped and then just wins, cool. 
But those issues don't stop this from being easily my favourite sprite battle of the season. Not the best of the season overall though, there is still a monolithic gap between this and the number one spot. And I'm sure you can already tell what that is. You look pretty strong. Let's fight. Oh, I get it. You want to take on the champ to boost your street cred, right? I mean, yeah, what else did you really expect? This is truly Death Battle's magnum opus. Not necessarily the best episode, but by a landslide, the most important and the one that had the biggest impact on Versus as a whole. I said how I hold season one to much lower standards than the rest of the series, but the same can't be said for Goku vs Superman. Outside of the poor research, which I never really care about regardless. I'm not especially lenient towards this episode in regards to its writing and animation because I don't really need to be. This episode still holds up when applying modern day standards and even surpasses most episodes released nowadays. Yeah, the animation isn't visually the prettiest thing ever and the opening abridged skit is a bit weird, but everything else about this episode soars. It captures the high octane fast paced action of Dragon Ball so well and conveys the character speed better than in any other episode of the show, period. The fight manages to have a good mix of really exciting and fast action while also giving the big moments enough time to sink in and feel impactful. Goku's transformations, both uses of the Kamehameha, Superman's sun dipping while Goku charges the spirit bomb, there are so many great moments. The banter and voice acting are great and sell the spirit of the characters so well, the fight manages to stay well paced and entertaining despite its absurd 10 minute runtime. the death is straight up one of the best the show has ever had with the most impactful moment of destruction in all of death battle, almost everything about this fight is nothing short of spectacular. It's far greater than the sum of its parts, and the sum of its parts was already pretty amazing on its own. I don't even know what else I can say about this episode. Goku vs Superman is easily, without question, the best episode of season 1. Even when being extra lenient towards everything else, nothing in the season even comes close to topping this. It's more than just another episode, it's more than just a season finale. It's a truly important event for the show with an ungodly amount of passion put into it that has stood the test of time and remained by far their best season finale. Here's to hoping Galactus vs Unicron is finally able to come along and top it. And with that, the season 1 ranking has been wrapped up. What did I think of the season overall? Yeah, it was alright. Probably the weakest of the show overall in regards to the episode quality though. There were several universal issues that most episodes of the season faced, from static animation to bad editing with overuse of fan art, to poor coverage of the characters stats, though the animation for that didn't really apply to the fights that Lang animated, and one of those things definitely does not bother me nearly as much as most people in the versus community. Though to be fair there were some universal positives, like the charm that all but the unholy trilogy at the bottom was able to capture to an extent. The big question though, do I like it more than season 3? Definitely yes, season 3 had higher peaks and more episodes I'd say I loved, but it also matches season 1 in the amount of episodes I'd say I outright disliked. And considering it's only got 60% of season 1's episode count, that's more than a little sad. But yeah, season 1's carried by its charm and also Goku vs Superman I guess. I'm surprised it only had 5 episodes I outright disliked and 2 that I don't really have an opinion on, with me liking the remaining 18 but very little of it stands out as great. This is easily the weakest season, besides 3. 3 might have had a higher average level of quality, but season 1 at least isn't disappointing. It has the excuse of being the first one, while season 3 followed up one of their best seasons ever, after they'd already established what they could do at their peak. So that's every season of the show ranked and reviewed, right? Well, I'm still decently happy with my season 7 video, but I'm less sure about seasons 2 through 6. Beyond disagreeing with a lot of my placements now, I'm just not really happy with those videos. Obviously the text to speech voice is an issue, but I also feel I rushed through pretty much every single segment. Because I watched them all in call, I felt the need to get every segment done as quickly as possible to avoid holding everything up. That's why if you look at my season 4 ranking, the segment for Sephiroth vs Virgil was way longer than the rest because I forgot to write it until the call ended. And on top of that, most of them were done when I was very inexperienced at writing reviews. I mean, I would still am, but I at least know a decent bit more about it now. So I've decided, in order to cover my thoughts on every season of the show better, I'm going to remaster all of my season rankings. Barring season 1 for obvious reasons, and also season 7 because it was recent enough I guess. And who knows, I might go through with my plan of making them all in advance and releasing them daily over the course of a week. I haven't set anything in stone yet, but I'll probably go through with this if I'm able to. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video, it took quite a while to make, and I'll see you in the next one.